Hey guys, how you doing? You sh- this this is like one of the most scary things I've done in like since I can remember. And usually when I'm coming on stage, there's lights everywhere. I'm like, eh. <laughs> so this time I was thinking you guys will have lights on again, and I was just. Be- <laughs> Yeah, so my name is Mr. Easy um, Tosin Ajibade. I'm so happy to be here. You know, thank you for, for being here. Shout out to everyone that put this together. And um, when, I was told to, when I was told to speak, I first thought it was a joke because I was like, yo, I thought it would be me coming to sing, you know. Um, but it's really important, you know, um, home. And for me, I, I, I want to talk about something that's very personal to me, you know. Uh, and it all starts from, you know, when I was a kid, dad was in the military, so dad was hardly around, you know. But every December, dad would come back home and would drive in this Peugeot, I think it was 305, blue Peugeot 305, and we'll go to the village uh, in Meko. This is in the western part, southwest of Nigeria. And so now we're going, I'll just stick my head outside, not like outside the window, but like just on the window. And I'll just watch as we drive through the countryside. And we'll get to we'll see all these guys, all these nomads, you know, with their cattle and the rods and with the cows just going around. And I always used to wonder, I'm like, where are these guys going? And, you know, cr- I always thought it was the same people, you know, because I was like, ah, last time we were going to him, God, we saw these guys. Now again, we're seeing these guys. You know, and I remember there's a place we'll stop. It's called Alamala. You know, and we'll stop at Alamala, and we'll buy something called Wara. Wara is cheese, you know. Anybody know Wara here? Yeah, so you could fry the Wara. You could fry the Wara, you know, put it in soup. You know, you could do anything with Wara. Taking me back right now. <laughs> I'm hungry now. You know. <laughs> you know, and we'll buy wara and we'd also buy meat, you know. And I'd ask my dad, I'm like, oh, daddy, where are these people from? How come these people are always walking and they get to this place before us? And dad said, no, 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 no. These people are not the same people. These people are nomads. I said, okay, so where do they come from? And it's like, oh, they come from the north. They come from way back to the way in the north. And I'm like, okay, so did they drive here? And it's like, no, they just walk. And I'm like, wow, how far is the north? And it's like very, very far. So I always wondered how, you know, people would start up from northern Nigeria. If you have an idea of how big Nigeria is, and from the north and come all the way to the southwest towards Benin Republic. And for me, that place was kind of, kind of dead, you know compared to where I lived in the heart of Lagos. Because we'll just go there, it's just village, we'll fetch water from the well, we'll bat outside in the Amatan, you know. So I didn't understand. And dad, dad was in the military, and that made him travel a lot. And so dad was always traveling. And I think that kind of formed who I became. And so growing up, I just always wanted to travel. I wanted to travel. I never wanted to be in one place. And, you know, the concept of those nomads um, kind of stuck. You know, somebody just going from one place to another and not really finding home. And, you know, just, I think, yesterday, I was, I was telling Suli, I'm like, Suli, I don't think I can do this, man. I don't, I don't know what to say. You know, and he was, and whilst we were talking, I then realized that for me, it's always been a journey trying to find home. You know, for me, it's like if I ask people here, for those who don't know me, you know, I'm, I'm Nigerian by birth. My mom and dad, Nigerian. I grew up in Ghana. I went to Ghana to study mechanical engineering. That was the plan. Yeah. <laughs> that was the plan. And, you know, from going to Ghana to study mechanical engineering, I ended up finding, after I completed the course, I ended up finding myself in the mines, doing illegal gold mining. So we'd dig, from, we'd dig for gold. 
And that was where I started to wear the hat, uh, which I started when, when I started doing music. And, you know, from there, from gold mining, it would take me to doing, distributing some drinks. I, ran, I made a lot of money, lost a lot of money, moved back to Nigeria, started a tech company, um, had a fallout with my co-founder, started another tech company, and it was in that process I started experimenting with the music. Now, when I was in uni studying mechanical engineering, I also did parties on the side. And I only did parties because I wanted to make money, because it's like, everybody's just reading, nobody's partying. So I started doing parties, <laughs> you know. Um, but that was my first experience with music, doing parties and bringing artists. And um, I didn't know it would mean anything. You know, I just thought it was something that was temporary to just make money as a student, and I left it. And when I finished my BSc, I started doing the gold mining. I went on to do my uh, master's, go back to Nigeria. And in the space between when I had to start another company, this was the time I started experimenting with the music and practicing what I had learned with, with the music and digital marketing. And fast forward, I became some guy with the heart, singing songs that sounded like they were Nigerian and Ghanaian. And some people didn't know if I was Nigerian or Ghanaian. <laughs> Until today, some people even ask me, it's like, are you Nigerian or Ghanaian? <laughs> funny, question, funny thing, the last Nigerian elections, I made a comment about um, the elections. And people were like, why are you talking about Nigerian elections? <laughs> like, bro, I'm Nigerian. You know, but what I've seen in, in all of this, in, in this whole journey, is that the truth is, like if you ask me now, yo, easy, where do you live? I don't know. On my passport, I have UK residency, US residency, UAE residency, Ghana residency. No, I'm not, I'm not, this is not me. In my village, though, I can tell them, yo, I have this visa, this visa. You know, and at some point this year, I realized that, yo, I had gotten some place in, um, in L.A. I was staying, and then I had the place in London I was staying, and then Nigeria and Ghana, and I was like, this is just a mess. Where do I really live? And speaking to Suli the other day, I just kind of realized that, for me, it's been a journey to find home. For me, everything in my life that I can remember has just been a journey to find home. From when I was in school and switched from arts to the sciences, from when I went to Kumasi to study engineering, left engineering to start doing the gold mining, and everything, and it's always seemed like I've been able to switch things and not be attached. And so at some point, my mom used to think I had no, she's like, do you have feelings? Do you have some problem with your feelings? <laughs> Because, like, I could just switch. I could switch friends. I shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> Let me not talk about that. But, like, even... <laughs> but the careers, like, I could switch careers and move on to the next one. I remember this one time, I loaned some money from my friend's dad uh, to do some petroleum business, and we, we lost everything, like, 18 millionaire. And... Uh, the next day, I was on to something again. And I still had the boldness to go meet my friends dad and say, I have this new idea. <laughs> you know, but what I'm trying to, the picture I'm trying to paint is, for me, I've not found home. And for me, I, I feel like every day I'm far away from home. But for me, home is not like behind or by my side. It's like home is a destination I'm steady trying to get to. And so that's why every time, and it's like I don't want to get lost in this journey of finding home. And so I'm always trying to bring people around me. And just like the, the, the nomad, the Katu Rera, just like he brings his entire family with him as he's going with his cattle in search of greener pastures, in search of wherever home is, 
or wherever home will be for them. It's in the same vein, I try to bring my fans along by saying, you know, Accra to Lagos. And then I say, oh, Lagos to London. You know, and I don't know where the next one is going to take me. Maybe it's London to somewhere, I don't know. Or maybe it's in space or something. You know, and I think for every, every one of us, in my, I feel every journey... As long as you're in this life, you're going to continue going on a journey. Whether it's a journey in a new relationship, you meet somebody and then it's a journey to wherever it will end. Or you start a family, it's a journey. You have a kid, it's a journey. Watching that kid, you know, from conception to, you know, seeing the kid go to school and have their own family. Or starting that new job or starting that new career going out of whatever is your comfort zone, saying, you know, I studied engineering, but now I want to do arts, or I'm in the arts, and now I want to do business. It's a constant journey, and you're not the only one going on that journey. And sometimes it feels very lonely. It feels very lonely. Sometimes it feels like you're the only one doing this. You know, it feels like you're the only guy on the road, just with your cattle, looking for the next greener pasture. But one thing I learned from these herdsmen, these, these nomads in Nigeria, is they always took their, they, they, they take their culture with them. So you, and that's why I always thought it was the same person. Because they still dress the same way. And they still have the heart, and they still have the stick. And so I saw that it was possible to you know how, like, we're product of our environment, and as we go, like, as I go personally, I'm taking new things, I'm learning, I'm meeting new people, new sounds and everything. But at the crust of everything, you are who you are. And, you know, everything and every experience is just even shaping you, is shaping more, shaping you more. But you are still who you are. So it's important, like the nomads, whilst you go from one point to another, finding greener pastures in every sector of your life, to remember that you are you, and you're not alone in that journey, and it is perfectly normal. And it is okay to feel lost and feel like you don't even know what's going on. It's still part of the journey. You know, it's still part of the journey. And I'd, I'm almost done anyway. Um, <laughs> I'd wrap it up with this thing I was talking to my friend uh, about. I was saying how back in the day we'll go to boarding school, and when you go to boarding school, there's so many happy moments, you know, the, so many times where you're chilling with you. How many people went to boarding school? I don't know. Like African boarding school. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the good moments, the also crazy moments where the senior is punishing you, or, you know. <laughs> or telling you to go run some errands. And a lot of times you're, you're tired. You're like, oh, I want to go home. I want to go home. I'm tired of this place. But on the last day, when you're done with exams, you don't want to leave. You don't want to go back to the home you were, you were screaming about. You know? And in that same cycle, it's going to continue until I think the only time you stop traveling is, you know, when, when you die. If not, you're going to keep traveling. So to wrap it up, I'll say, you know, my name is Mr. Easy, traveling guy, nomad. I still don't know where I'm going. Sometimes I don't know where <laughs> I'm from. And I know you guys feel the same way too. But it's important to know that you're not alone in this journey. And at the end, in the end, you will find out why you had to go through these parts, because everything is going to connect. Just like I look back and I see that if I never went to Ghana to study mechanical engineering, I wouldn't have learned some three words to put in my music. And if I didn't go to the mines to do illegal gold mining, <laughs> if I didn't go to the mines, I wouldn't have found the hat that I used to put to, to, to start. And if I didn't have a failure in the gold business and go back to Nigeria, 
I wouldn't have learned all the digital marketing I learned to push the music. If I didn't do the parties, I wouldn't have got in contact with artists, which helped me when I started music to get collaborations. And when my business filled in Nigeria, the investors who invested in my new business ended up being the ones who kind of sit on my advisory board for my music business. So everything just connects. But you never realize until you look back and say, oh, OK, 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 OK. So that's all I got to say. Keep traveling. God bless you guys.